What is up? Welcome to Project Freelance. My name is Kay Anagonio and this is my podcast. I talk to you guys every single week about freelancing. I bring on a different guest from a different industry and we talk about freelancing, whatever it is that they do, however they got into it, and we discuss tips and tricks for other people in those industries. So I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. If you're new to the podcast, hit that subscribe button. We have episodes come out every Monday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I don't want you to miss an episode. We've had over 110 episodes of Project Freelance. So if you are new to the podcast, go back to the very beginning the podcast actually started out with an entire season of me just talking to you about freelancing, about tips and tricks for freelancing, where you can get jobs, how you can get jobs, the importance of a portfolio, your website, all that stuff is back at the very beginning of Project Freelance. So just scroll all the way back to the beginning and check that out after this episode. And I hope you guys gain a ton of knowledge and insight from these conversations and If you have further questions, we can actually hop on a call. Just head to my website, justtheletterk.com slash booking, and you can actually hop on a call with me. We will schedule a time and we will get your questions answered about freelancing. If there's anything I can help you guys with, I am definitely open to it and I am all ears. So go ahead and schedule a call with me today at justtheletterk.com slash booking. Links will be down in the description. Without further ado, let's get into this week's episode with Erica Torres, a wedding and portrait photographer, and she is also a musician. She is the front woman for a band called Frequency Within, and I've actually filmed a music video for her band, and I really wanted to have her on this podcast to share her insight as a wedding photographer, as a portrait photographer, and as somebody who is in the music industry that loves writing and whose faith is extremely strong. So, Let's jump into this episode. Erica, please introduce yourself and what it is that you do to the Project Freelance audience. My name is Erica Torres. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer um, under Erica Torres Photography here in Southern California. And I'm also um, a lead vocalist and writer for Frequency Within. All right. So let's talk about uh, portrait photography, wedding photography, concert photography. How did you get into photography? Tell me about your beginnings. Take me way back and when you first picked up a camera. Oh, man. So I was in high school. I was a sophomore um, and I had to pick an elective uh, because I had like, you know, a free period beside, you know, music. Um, And I thought picking up a camera would be fun. What I thought would be fun turned into uh, me just making money from it. People started paying me to take portraits and I didn't even think that you can make money off something like that. And uh, fast forward, you know, I started going to college, decided to take their professional wedding photography classes, got my certificate in it and uh, kind of hit the ground running at that point. And um, the whole reason I got into weddings was because just I'm a sucker for love. I'm, (laughs) I'm like that. I'm, I'm that girl. I'm, I'm the like, let's have your dream wedding. Like I I love being a part of people's special day and seeing it just really come together and two people who found each other, hearing their stories. Um, it's, it's just magical. So I, it's something I can really hold on and, uh, believe in. So for those out there that are kind of trying to figure out like, should I go to college to pursue my passion to get a degree in it? Or should I just hit the ground running and just try to make it? Um, Can you talk a little bit about the perks of going to school to get things like certifications for, you know, uh, photography or whatever it is that people want to pursue? Yes. Um, Going to school definitely set me apart. Like it it equipped me with um, like the business, business savviness of how to handle like the back end of um, the photography business, such as like accounting, you know, how to do your taxes, but also how to talk to people. And um, just, I I didn't really have to struggle with um, like, how do I work my camera? Because they taught me that in photo one, photo 101. So I got to bypass that within like the first two semesters. It, It definitely catapulted me a little bit. Um, and I was able to develop my own style very quickly. Um, and also having a certificate in it, uh, uh, puts my clients at ease. You know, I have it hanging in my office. So when I bring them in, they can see like, Hey, Oh, she's, she's certified. I I know what I'm doing. I mean, uh, 
it, it's kind of like if you were to go to a doctor's office and you you look at their wall and you want to see that uh, like ma masters or whatever it may be doctorates just to give you that ease you know I'm, I'm not um, definitely I'm not saying that everybody should you know go to college for this but I just wanted to ease my clients because uh, the type of weddings that I do, uh, they're, they're high-end weddings. So that was definitely something I, I wanted to um, put myself in as far as, like, clientele. I think that's a great idea, you know, getting certifications. Like, I recently got my, my drone certification, so now I'm a certified drone pilot, and that definitely puts my clients more at ease instead of just hiring some random drone operator off the street. You know, you have somebody that is certified, that's insured, and that really knows what they're doing and took the time to really engage and better themselves in that field. So uh, congrats, congratulations and kudos to you for getting certified as a photographer. I think that's great. Um, so walk me through a wedding. Like, what is your process for capturing a wedding from start to finish? Ooh, from start to finish, this is like my favorite thing to talk about. <laughs> okay, so the, the first thing usually is, um, well, let's start from the beginning. Um, the, the client will find me either on Yelp or on my website or my favorite word of mouth. Um, that seems to be what's growing my clients. And um, I'll give them a call. I'll ask them to, to meet up with me for a, a consultation. So I'll meet up with the couple. I, I ask them, oh, what... <laughs> Uh, tell me about your love story. And from their love story, I'm able to pick up on um, both of the couple's uh, characteristics. Um, I, I've had couples want very rustic. Um, I had couples not very classic. Some people love traditional. Some people just want to get married in Vegas. I, I've seen it all. And um, from that, I'm able to fit, fit my style to theirs. Because it's very situational, you know. I, I always believe in that. I, I, I do have a cohesive style, but at the same time, I want to fit it to my clients. So it's like, all right, do I want to make, make stuff, like, super distorted with some white angle? Like, do I want to get super colorful with it? Classic, they want black and whites. Like, that, that's how I decide from there. Um, and usually uh, I let a few months pass or a year pass, depending on how soon they book me. And uh, the wedding day comes. I... I I show up super early. I'm shooting their getting ready photos, um, handling their first look. I love the first looks. They always make me cry. Um, and from that point on, I do the ceremony and I deliver um, a good solid two weeks later. And it just, that's, that's the schedule I follow and it hasn't proven me wrong just yet. So that's the start and fish of it all. And, um, it, it sounds easy. I know the way I make it sound is like, oh, it's super easy, but there's a lot of time and time management that goes into it. Um, so, you know, I just, I don't want to give uh, out false answers here. <laughs> no, for sure. So before, so when they, when they initially find you and they book you, are you getting a deposit for your work uh, ahead of time or do you do it a, a different way? I'm just trying to figure that out for other freelancers out there that may want to get into wedding photography. Um, should they be getting a deposit or is there another way to go about that? Oh, so important, so important that you get a 50% deposit on that wedding day because they, I, before I, I really had this whole process down, I was not getting a 50% deposit and um, they would end up not hiring me. You, you want them to uh, be able to, you know, really invest in you and make that promise to you as much as you're doing it to them because nothing is worse than uh, having last minute cancellations when you could have had that date open for somebody else. So very important on whether it be engagements, portraits, concerts, get that 50% deposit um, so you guys are on the same level. And also it shows a professionalism as well. And then how did you find your worth? How did you come up with your price rate uh, for shooting either a concert or a wedding or, you know, portraits? Um, how, how long did it take you to find your value um, it, let's see. So I professionally really started shooting in 2013. I, I want to say it, it was actually very recent 2015. Um, I just, I found out what my cost of doing business was. So the way you, you find that out is like, how much are you investing in like the Adobe creative suite? How much are, are you, you know, is your office, how, how, how much is it to get there gas wise? You know, um, you want to add all that together 
And then you want to set a minimum, you know, say if you're spending four, you know, let's go lower $300 on your cost of doing business. Well, how much profit do you want to make? So then you kind of add, let's say, I want to make sure I make, you know, 200 or you, you, you kind of go from there. So, cause you don't want to be making below your cost of doing business. Cause you're going to go bankrupt. You're going to go broke. You're going to show up during, uh, you know, when you start doing your tax season and realize I didn't even break even. So you, you want to uh, find out those factors, add it all up and, and just go from there. That's a solid foundation. Perfect. That was great advice. Thank you so much. Um, so have you ever been screwed over on a job? This is something that I talk about on the podcast because I think it's important that we talk about things like this. You don't have to be super specific, but uh, if you have if you have any stories of times you've been screwed over, I'd love to hear them. Oh my God, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every freelancer has been screwed over. Um, if you haven't, well, like you have a rude awakening coming. Um, I mean, it, they're learning experiences for sure. I. Uh, shot a wedding delivered the photos and did not receive the other half of the 50 percent oh i did not receive it i shot for free at that point my oh what a waste that was such a rude awakening that was one of my first weddings um i i did i bended over backwards for this client and I I couldn't believe it. They they fell off the face of the earth. They blocked me on Instagram, blocked me on Facebook. Um, I'll tell you good two good stories. Okay, so that was one of them. But I got screwed over by a fellow photographer. Wow. So this is one of my stories to tell because it just shows like, you know, hey, be careful out there. Remember, this is a community where you you want to pull each other up not push each other down, you know, um, community over competition, you know what I mean? So, uh, what ha happened was I second shot for a photographer and, um, it was for a wedding. She showed up super late to the wedding, which is crazy. Um, and, uh, so I ended up shooting the, the first look and also the, the like getting ready and everything. And, um, she shows up during the ceremony and she starts giving me attitude. I was like, whoa, you know, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm sorry you're late, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm here, though. And um, that night she asked for all the photos. I gave her the photos. And she got published with my photos. Wait, what? She got, yep, she got published uh, in a magazine with my photos <laughs> and took credit, credit for it. Oh, my God. And that... That broke my heart. I was still um, a developing photographer and everything. And I honestly stopped photographing for a year and a half because of it. Wow. Um, I stepped out of photography for a little bit because that broke my trust and could not believe that somebody um, who I looked up to, you know, a mentor, did that to me. And... Um, you know, uh, uh, thank God, you know, God, you know, I, I forgave and decided just to move on with my business. And I, the way I look at it is like, yeah, my name may not be on it, but technically I got published. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like, hey, your photos were badass enough to get published in a magazine. Like, that's freaking sick. And like, yeah, it, it is super unfortunate that that happened. And like, I can't believe the gall of some people. And that's something that I've heard a couple times, you know, I've heard people getting screwed over by, I mean, I've also been screwed over by a photographer. I had a memory card formatted by a photographer and that was like super devastating. I had an interview on there. I had like all kinds of photos on there and they just, because of a situation, their higher up told them, to, literally told them to format my memory card. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And I, I, it was like a situation where I like set my camera down for like 10 minutes, walked away from it, came back and all the footage was gone. Oh my God. See, that's, that's insane to me. Like we're supposed to, we're all fighting, you know, the same battle and it's, it's just nuts how cutthroat, you know, some photographers can be, but at the same time, you know, it, it just shows there's, you, you just got to be careful out there. Not, not all of us are like that. You, you can tell the difference between the professionals and the amateurs and the amateurs are the ones who are going to screw you. You, you got to hold yourself at a higher level and I, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. And 
you know, um, that that's what I realized. You, you want to definitely hang out with the professionals because those are going to be the ones who are going to take you under their wing and take care of you while the others are just going to sit there in jealousy. <laughs> yep, absolutely. So my next question for you is, have you ever done any internships in your in your career to, you know, help with your photography or anything like that? Oh, yes. Um, I have definitely reached out um, to many photographers, a second shot under them, um, offered to have coffee with them to pick their brains. Um, all the wedding photographers that are listed on Yelp, I emailed them. I tell you, I, I just wanted to learn as much because they are in the field. They are saturated in that field. So I just wanted to prepare myself as much as possible. And it's on honestly the best experience and I highly recommend it to, um, any budding photographer out there or to this day, I still do it. Like I will reach out to somebody whose style I like and, um, or whose business is blooming right now just to have coffee with them and second shoot for them just to see, okay, well, what's, uh, what's different, you know, because if you hang out with successful people, it will, uh, definitely make you want to work just as hard. Uh, what is that? There's a saying that says like, you are the first three people you, you hang out with. You are, you're the, like the, cul the culmination of the five closest people you're with. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That, that's it. And that's why, that's why I like, I always try to just throw myself out there and with these entrepreneurs and, um, with hopes that some of their success will rub off on me. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's the way to go. Absolutely. And that's a huge reason I do this podcast. Like I look up to every person that's come on this podcast and I, there's something about their work or what they're doing or what they're pursuing that really inspires me to work harder. So yeah, I can totally relate to that. Um, who are some of your influences? Speaking of people you look up to, who are some of your influences in the photography world? Ooh, okay. So the first one is, um, her name is Jackie Lovato. Um, she runs Lovato images. She does an, uh, an array of like different types of photography. She's local here in Orange County. And I had the opportunity to, um, have her as a professor. So it was just pretty amazing. Like her, her work is phenomenal. And, uh, I got to work, got to work with her closely and now we're like colleagues, we're friends and I, it's like a dream come true for me. So that's one. Another one is of course is Annie Libowitz. You know, she's famous for shooting the, you know, in photography in Rolling Stone, Vanity Fair. Um, I am like obsessed with Annie. Uh, she's the reason why I went into studio work and why I like to build my own backdrops and backgrounds and create different type of atmosphere the way she approaches uh, clients is you know she allows them to be their true self she doesn't try to evoke too much out of them that's not them so it's kind of such a natural type of photography and um the third one is actually you Kay. uh i was following you since like the beginning of, of you your youtube and um i followed your tutorials and it, it, it's a trip because um, you know, your videography work was always phenomenal to me and your photography. So it definitely gave me that little bit of edge. So, uh, it's, this is another dream come true that we got to work together and now I get to be on your podcast. <laughs> yeah. So people that don't know, I actually filmed a music video for frequency within a couple years back and it was so fun. We filmed in this like abandoned dairy farm. It was so amazing. And it was so much fun to get to work with you and, and the band and, I love filming music videos. It's one of my favorite things to do. So, it, you know, it was also a big deal to me to get to do that for you guys. And uh, yeah, of course, I'm stoked to have you on this podcast. Uh, I'm learning so much from you and, you know, hearing about these people that you look up to. Like, they're also people I look up to as well. Annie is such a great photographer, like you said. And I hope to one day get her on this podcast to share her insight and her story with the audience. I think it would be absolutely amazing. So that's definitely, she's definitely on my list of people to talk to. So um, let's switch gears and talk a little bit about music. How did you get into music and writing? Ooh, okay. Well, um, what started my music uh, love was I played saxophone in elementary school and uh, fell in love with it. And then I uh, took jazz band in high school, but this uh, a girl who used to play bass and she was like, yo, like you should totally pick up a guitar and um, like play with me. So I was like, all right, all right, I'll do it. Picked up a guitar, 
totally fell in love with the guitar, like hardcore, big time love affair with guitar. And uh, from the time I was a freshman up until now, I started like writing music um and it kind of just took off from there i started my first band it was called frantic chaos in um high school we played a few shows uh, we played a show at the knitting factory and i got addicted yeah i got addicted to shows from that point on i was like i need to do more of this um and right after high school freshman year in college um i was taking you know all the music theory classes, jazz improv and everything. Uh, my major was guitar. And um, <laughs> I started this band called Golly G Wiz, which is now known as Frequency Within, but we were a pop punk band. Um, and uh, as I grew, we all grew, we started writing about uh, more serious things. Uh, so we decided to change the name to Frequency Within. And uh, just to see how much my writing developed, you know, like what I always tell people is my albums, it's like those are diary entries. You get to see how, how much you grew, the, the stuff that you went through, the experiences, and it just gets uh, more and more serious. Uh, Frequency Within is a, a Christian alternative rock band, so I, I try to definitely keep everything very clean and um uh, very heartfelt and just every song is, is an experience and the whole reason why I got into writing music and playing was because I never want anybody to feel alone I mean being an artist um, uh, I think all of us who are artists have a little piece of anxiety and depression in them so we we have that ability to uh, connect with other people and, and I thought well this is my platform um, I'm going to use this platform to reach out to people who do not know what to do, who feel like they're stuck in the, their depression, stuck in their anxiety, stuck in, you know, this, this feeling of like, why, why do I feel alone? Well, I'm going to use this to reach out to them. I'm going to pull on their heartstrings, let them know you're not alone. So th this is the reason why I got into music because it's the only platform I, I have to where I can use my voice and I can stand up for those people and um, spread that love. Wow, that's so powerful. I can't like, wow, I, I have goosebumps right now. That's amazing. So um, tell me a little bit about writing, you know, Christian alternative music. Um, it's, what are some bands you looked up to back in the day or even now that you're listening to that are also in that genre? Um, and how have they influenced and inspired you as a writer? Um, to be honest, I didn't really listen to Christian rock. <laughs> okay. I, I listened to a lot. So that's like, I know it's crazy. Like, um, uh, a lot of my influences are bands like Senses Fail, Under Oath, Taking Back Sunday. Um, like, I mean, I, I'm a huge, like, emo alternative rock fan, but my faith, you know, comes first. So I thought, well, I can write music like this, but have like such content and meanings with this in it. I mean, there are bands like Skillet and I don't know what other bands are a Christian alternative. I only know one. Um, but, and I, I like their music. They're great. But um, it just, I feel like um, I can, I'm not like, trying to say like I'm gonna trick people into like becoming Christians that's not it but I can I can be right in the middle of this this rock scene without people knowing what these lyrics are about and until they ask me and I love when I go into interviews and they ask me oh what is this song about and then I get to talk about my faith I get to be like oh this is about God like this is about me praying or you know there's like a lyric in one of my songs that I, I talk about like you bring me to my knees and that's about prayer like it's just it's stuff that people wouldn't even imagine you know so it, I like to catch people off, off guard I like that, that whole awe factor like oh my god you know so that's the type of person I am <laughs> you know so I, I like to have that characteristic in my music. That's awesome. And uh, I mean, other bands, I, I can't even like think of many off the top of my head. I mean, Flyleaf comes to mind, obviously. They're, you know, Christian alternative slash post hardcore ish. Uh, I don't really know what I would classify them as anymore. But uh, yeah, there's there's so much good music out there. So I was curious to hear your who your influences were. 
What is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started? More music theory. <laughs> I, I wish I would have taken that more seriously um, growing up. Um, and also, I, I just recently um, learned that it's like, don't write for other people, write for yourself. Um, I used to always think like, oh, I, I need to write for to try to get this crowd of people to like me. But now I'm like, no, I'm going to write whatever I want to write. And if they like it, then they like it. Because yet again, this is for the the weak hearted. This is for the hurt. And this is for me. You know, it's it's my therapy as well. So I wish I would have known that uh, when I was younger not to care about what other people think, but I guess that just comes with age. And like a fine wine, I am aging like a Merlot. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. And as a photographer, what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started? Ooh, uh, to take risks. I needed to take risks in my business. Um, I, I used to be so scared um, to pay for advertising or um, put myself out there, especially when it came to corporate shooting. I just really started doing that a lot lately and I could have been doing this years back. So I'm like, whoa, I totally let my insecurities kind of take over on my, that business side. But uh, just like Nike, just do it. Don't even think about it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. And real quick, I actually, you just brought up advertising. Um, can you talk about your, how you advertise and what, what mediums you use? Are you going through like Instagram, Facebook, uh, website, SEO? Like what is your, what is your ad, uh, situation like, and, and what do you implement there? So at running an ad campaign on Facebook, I've, uh, cause you can select like, you know, the age ranges, women, men, that is helping me so much. I did that just like around Orange County, Riverside, you know, San Bernardino, you know, all of that. And I am seeing that really work. I was just like, wow, that's awesome. Um, so Facebook's a good one. Instagram's a good one. Boost those posts. Um, I've heard people say, don't boost it because it's a waste of money. But I'm like, well, it's a waste of money if you're putting out shit content. Like, put some, <laughs> put some good content out there, you know? Like, be, be very thoughtful about it. Um, don't just put one word. Use all those hashtags because I'm having more people find me through hashtags than um, Yelp. Like that seems to be seems to be working. The whole hashtag thing. Um, Orange County photographer. That that seems to be how people are finding me locally. Um, as for SEO, uh, I was hitting that pretty hard uh, last year. Didn't see it flourish too much, so I took a break from that this year. Uh, um, word of mouth. That's an also wonderful, wonderful things. Treat every client like they're your king or your queen, man. They will sing your praises. They will leave you Yelp reviews. They will leave you, you know, great reviews on your Facebook and pass out business cards, cards, do the legwork. We, we are so stuck in this digital age that people don't do the legwork anymore. Make flyers. You know, I'm a wedding photographer, so I'm visiting these small wedding boutiques. I'm going to these, um, these huge, like, uh, mixers and, and, you know, you, people want to put a face to the name. That's not, you know, outdated. Continue doing that. That's very, very important because you want your clients to trust you. Um, when business was going really slow, I went to, you know, farmers insurance. I, I went to mercury insurance and offered them a good deal. Hey, hire me. I'll, I'll do your headshots. You know, it's in that, that works doing that legwork because, other photographers are not going into these buildings. They're, they're doing it via email. It's quick to delete an email. It's quick to say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll reply to that later. But when they're, you're in front of their faces, it's a little harder for them to decline. Amazing. Thank you so much. That was excellent advice. And doing the legwork is so important. I feel like you're right. You know, people aren't going out and walking into the stores and putting their flyers up. Like I put my flyers up at guitar center cause I want to shoot music videos, you know? So I just made some flyers, put them in guitar center all over the place. And you know, I've gotten bands contacting me through there and, and that's great. And I think, like you said, doing that legwork is super vital and super important, especially in today's day and age. And the, to know that that kind of stuff still works, like you can still walk into a store and say, hey, I would love to shoot your headshots, hire me, I'm a photographer. It's amazing to hear that that kind of stuff still works even in this digital age. So thank you for sharing that. 
So if people want to find you, hire you, or pick your brain some more, how can they get a hold of you? Where can they go to find you on social media? Cool. Well, you can find me on Instagram, Erica Torres Photography. Um, you can also head over to my website, www www.ericatorisphotography.com. And, um, I mean, you could direct message me. Uh, I'm very quick to respond. If you want to have a cup of coffee with me, totally fine. I, I love to meet with other creatives. Let's pick each other's brain. Um, let's have a drink on me. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on project freelance. Thank you. Kay. All right, guys, that was Erica Torres. Thank you so much for coming on this episode of Project Freelance. I had a blast talking to you and getting to hear your story and getting to know you a little bit more. Like we said in this episode, we've actually worked together and I had a an absolute blast working with Frequency Within and I hope to shoot with them again in the, in the future. And Erica, if you ever need a videographer for a wedding, second shooter, please hit me up. I would love to get more into the wedding world. Definitely. Um, there's good money in that world and I got to get some of that money. I got to get that back. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, if you enjoyed this episode of Project Freelance, do me a favor and give it a rating. Give it five stars if you liked it. And if you leave feedback as well, I will actually send you a signed photo print of mine. One of my photos from an abandoned building, a photo of NASA's Saturn V rocket, or a photo of something else that I feel like printing out. Yeah, I would love to get some feedback from you on what you like about this podcast, things you would like to change, guests you would like to have on, and whatever else you want to, you know, get off your chest and talk about and tell other people about Project Freelance. If you guys did like this episode, if you do like this show, please share this podcast with a friend or two or anybody that you know that freelances that could do with some of this information. The best way we can grow is by spreading this podcast through word of mouth. So this is all you guys. Thank you so much for listening to Project Freelance. My name is Kay Anagonio. I hope this inspired you to go out and go create something. Stay strong. Keep enduring.